Pepsis flagellum, aka the tormentor wasp, is an emergent species of the order Hymenoptera. Its exact date of discovery is disputed, especially given the events that followed from its propagation. It is believed to have been discovered in the United States Southwest around 2016 to 2017. Entomologists Dr. Raj Manas and Dr. Mira Decker described the tormentor wasp in a paper published in the Journal of Insect Science, hosted by the Entomological Society of America, issue March 2017. Similar papers appeared in other journals hosted by the Society, including the Journal of Medical Entomology and the Journal of Integrated Pest Management. Pepsis flagellum is a eusocial wasp. This is considered anomalous for its portion of the Vespine family tree. Its closest known relative, Pepsis grossa, one of the tarantula hawk wasps, is a solitary parasitoid wasp. The tormentor wasp, however, establishes colonies of between one to three dozen wasps at a time. The colony has a cast structure. Warrior, non-dominant female tormentor wasps. These members of the colony act as an attack group for taking down large prey. Viable prey for the tormentor wasp varies from tarantulas to lizards to small mammals. They have, however, been known to hunt and attack large mammals that can't evade enough stings from the warriors. Warriors have a dark blue tint to their wings and almost black bodies. They typically reach 3 to 3.5 centimeters long. Consort Male tormentor wasps that accompany the colony to mate with the queen and tend injuries of the warriors. Consorts will ingest portions of the pulp secreted by the colony larvae and regurgitate a pasty substance that they use to coat the warriors. The paste acts as a salve, even helping to restore portions of damaged exoskeleton. It is theorized that the paste may also account for the variety in venom formulae in the warriors. Consorts have a greenish-yellow tint to their wings and are slightly smaller than the warriors, only managing 2.5 to 2.9 centimeters. Larvae Not typically counted toward the one to three dozen wasps in a colony, larvae are the adult wasp's source of food. Once the warriors have subdued prey, the queen arrives to deposit her eggs in the carcass. The eggs hatch, devouring the body and secreting a pulp eaten by the adult tormentor wasps. The larvae are quick to mature, turning to cocooned pupae after a few days. At this stage, pulp secretion stops. The colony that laid the eggs departs, ready to find more prey and, by extension, more food. Larvae look pale and milky before they pupate, then take a darker gray coloration until they emerge as young adults. Queen Dominant female tormentor wasp Queens are determined at birth by pheromones in the maturing pupae. Females with the highest levels of dominance pheromone will seek each other out after emergence from pupae cocoons and fight to the death. The last dominant female standing becomes queen, with all other female wasps deferring to her. She will begin mating with the hatched males almost immediately, ready to begin the colony cycle again. Warriors will begin to roam in search of prey and a host for her eggs. The queen can reach an excess of 6.5 centimeters long and has an orange gold tint to her wings. One of the tormentor wasp's unique attributes is its sting. Each warrior carries a slightly different formula of venom Individual stings from a warrior are painful, coming in at a 2 on the Schmidt Pain Index. Once more stings from different warriors are inflicted, however, the pain increases drastically. 3 to 5 different stings bring the Pain Index to 3. 7 or more different warriors stinging the same victim will meet or exceed a 4 on the Schmidt Pain Index. 
Venom lethality goes up exponentially with the variety of warrior stinging as well. Single warrior stings pose no risk to a non-allergic victim. Three to five different warriors poses a mortality rate of seven in a thousand cases estimated. Seven or more stings brings the mortality rate to a whopping 230 in 1,000 cases. This unconventional approach to venom dosage makes a specific minimum lethal dose difficult to determine for pepsis flagellum. Consorts have very weak stings of their own, barely a 1 on the pain index. This is interesting considering the theory that their regurgitated paste may affect the venom formula in each warrior they coat with it. The queen has a sting more akin to regular tarantula hawk wasps, blindingly painful for a few moments, but not particularly venomous, even in conjunction with warrior's stings. As described by the cast structure and its members' roles, a colony of tormentor wasps is highly mobile. They do not nest like their cousins the paper wasps. They use the carcasses of their victims as brood layers, depositing the queen's eggs into the victim so the eggs can produce the pulp needed by the adults. The queen, consorts, and warriors go into a state of low metabolism and activity during the few days the larvae are supplying food. Mating occurs during this time, readying the queen to deposit eggs in the next victim. Once the first larvae begins to pupate, the colony takes flight again, both to search for more food and to avoid the next generation once it is hatched. Colonies of tormentor wasps frequently war with one another. Each queen has a distinctive smell that is passed to her colony, also possibly a role of the consort's paste coating. This smell acts as a powerful and near instantaneous IFF for the wasps. For reasons unknown to the entomological community, the tormentor wasps' metabolism began to accelerate in the second half of the 2010s, shortly after its discovery. The larvae began to pupate after shorter periods, and the colony spent less time in dormancy between hunts. More and more colonies appeared. They began to spread outward from the southwest states of Nevada, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona, up into the Midwest. The climate suited them, and they proliferated. Reports of animal carcasses infested with wasps saturated the scientific community. Everything from squirrels, chipmunks, groundhogs, raccoons, and possums, all the way up to deer. One stomach-churning photo of a particular deer carcass gained internet fame, called the Dubuque photo after its location in Dubuque, Iowa. The photo showed a deer in a partial state of decay with evidence of over a dozen former colonies riddling its hide. Given Pepsis flagellum's tendency to fight with its own kind, it is probable that one colony killed the deer, ate, and left. Then more colonies found the still viable meat of the animal and infested it. The first recorded human fatality to the tormentor wasps did not happen until June 14, 2018 in Waverly, Nebraska. Gordon Fortier, age 38, was attempting to get rid of what he thought was an infestation of paper wasps. It turned out that a colony of tormentor wasps had killed an animal in his garage. They evaded his insecticide spray and attacked. He was reported as having 96 stings on his person by the coroner. The garage was sealed and smoked thoroughly exterminating the colony. By 2019, Pepsis flagellum was considered a public threat. Its heightened metabolism, attributed to everything from climate change, pesticides, and even simple natural mutation, caused it to spread and kill across the country. The only reprieve was during winter, when it burrowed deep into the earth. Colonies were found in hibernation all across the nation, as deep as 10 feet below the ground in some cases. 
The Tormentor Wasp was hard to kill with cold or heat. It had spread to Mexico and the Caribbean, and was poised to threaten South America. Its effects on local species were devastating. While it had been confined to the arid portions of the southwest, colonies managed to find enough prey to get by, but not enough to become a prolific pest. Once it reached the Midwest, colonies spread like wildfire. Humans in affected areas were encouraged to wear beekeeper suits when in public. Fatalities had grown substantially since June 14th, with tormentor wasp deaths being more common than automotive accident deaths. The fatality rate was slowed by protective measures, but other problems arose. Livestock was attacked by the colonies. Pets were kept indoors at all times, leading to a reduction in ownership of large dogs. Many were put down as they had nowhere safe to be kept. Outdoor labor was done only in protective gear and homes established airlocks, where a person would don and doff the beekeeper's suit and apply pesticide to any insects that managed to infiltrate before returning indoors. In early 2020, colonies of Pepsis flagellum had been found in Taiwan, Eritrea, Spain, and Australia. These nations took containment precautions immediately and seemed to have a handle on the population growth of Pepsis flagellum. Controlled burns of suspected infested areas, mass pesticide use, and protective gear ensured few or even no fatalities in these regions. They learned from observing the lessons the US had to figure out the hard way. Even so, the tormentor wasp endured. Australia's population of wombats proved particularly vulnerable to it, allowing the insect to spread far and wide across the land down under. From Taiwan, soon it spread to China and the Philippines. Eritrea was its beachhead into Africa. By mid-2020, the tormentor wasp was everywhere except Antarctica and the Arctic Circle. Fatalities continued as the colonies gradually learned where to sting. The beekeeper suits were effective, but the warrior's stingers were large enough to pierce through in specific locations, particularly around the hips. New suits were prepared and manufactured, but mass distribution proved too little too late. The outlook was bleak. Much of the planet's large, viable prey had been killed by the Tormentor. Humanity was living in protected fear. Cities had long tubes along their walkways and among their buildings, separated by airlock sections in case of containment breach. Some settlements had spawned on the oceans, a combination of flotilla cities and actual floating metropolises. The water was not kind to wasps, thankfully until it was. Reports of beached whales along the coast of India included carcasses riddled with tormentor wasp brood layers. Complete analysis of the carcasses was impossible, considering the active infestations still present. If the insects have somehow managed to enter the water, even just shallows, the ramifications could prove dire. 